I suppose the obvious place to start is to wish everybody a Happy New Year, Bon Anne, Navroz, whatever your creed, culture or belief system, it's a new year, it's an exciting time. On cue, the sun has come out just as I switched the camera on, so I thought it was a, an appropriate uh, opportunity to basically outline very quickly what we've done over the last few months on the Kirkstone channel and what we're going to go on to do over the next few months, just so people are um, au fait with, uh, with our plans and, uh, and the possibilities. So over the last few months we've looked at um, a whole range of plants coming into the collection and we've concentrated on the succulent side on the aloe family. We've looked at aloes uh, in the broadest possible sense without revising that uh, taxonomic revisions that have recently occurred We've looked at Hawarthias, again, without looking at the splitting, and Gasterias. We will come back in a few months' time to a much more expansive overview of the Hawarthia collection here. We'll be talking about the recent revisions to Hawarthia, the incorporation of Tulista and Hawarthiopsis, broadening the understanding of the relationship between the different groupings within the aloe family. We've also taken in a lot of South African bulbs and we've just finished a very successful South African bulb series. We will be revisiting the South African bulbs from September of next year, so September 2019, because most of the South African geophytes, of course, will be going into dormancy over the next few weeks and months. What we haven't spent a lot of time talking about are the larger, most showy bulbs which are basically in this particular greenhouse uh, Amaryllis strohippiastrums and we'll be covering them covering their growth over the next few weeks and hopefully towards a successful flowering period looking at all the cultivars and also the species hippiastrum from South America um, probably after we do the Hawarthias and the Gasterias. The next few weeks we'll be concentrating very focusedly on the smaller globular cacti. So the second part of this short video will be a brief retrospective of what happened last year. So the state of play in the, the globular cacti collection as of November, December 2018. In that brief overview you will notice a specific focus on Gymnocalisium, which is the genus which is the most represented in the greenhouse. We'll also see the very quickly expanding furrow cacti group, so that's the second focus after Gymnopolisium. And also on the genus Astrophytum, which is another genus within the broader overarching Echinocactus concept. So one large gene genus from South America, so from Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia, Uruguay, that's Gymnopolisium, and that will be the, the next main focus after what we're doing right now. And then we're looking at some unboxing and some repotting up and also some uh, brief description of the furrow cactus which is a genus which I've been very interested in for a long time and which we seem to have got quite a few new really really good specimens into the greenhouse over the last few months. And then we'll move on as I say to Astrophyton. Now there are an accepted four plus one so depending on what your attitude is towards the plant that was known as Digitostigma, Caput Medici, but I think most people now accept that as being an Astrophyton. So five inarguable species of Astrophyton, Asterias, Myriostigma, Capricornae and Ornatum, plus Astrophyton senilis or Capricornae subspecies senilis, and uh, which one have I missed? Coahuiense. 
So astrophytes and myriostigma coagulans. So those are the, the five or seven distinct taxons within astrophytum. And then, of course, we'll be moving on to the cultivars and the breeding and the recent uh, new, new cultivars and taxons which have come in, particularly from Japan. There's also some really interesting hybrids between the species within the astrophytum group. Mostly we'll be concentrating on Gymnocolysium. We've had some really, really nice plants coming into the collection uh, really through November and December, which you haven't seen yet and haven't appeared on any of the Kirkstone Channel videos. So we've got a lot to do. I'm not going to hang around and do lengthy introductions, just basically to keep you um, up to date on the overall planning, and uh, to give you a different view of me, because we haven't had this set up before. You've only seen me from the side doing potting ups. Um, if you don't like it, let me know. The more you tell us, the better the channel will be. If there are particular features on the channel or particular ways of doing things that you don't like, tell us and we can change it. If there are particular things that you do like and you want to see more of, tell us and we can change it. And that way the balance towards what you do like and what you don't like obviously will shift over time. And that's basically it. So, Allo family, Hawarthia, Hawartheopsis, Tulista, Gasterius, Allo, uh, Aristolo, Goniallo, uh, Alloidendron. So all of these expanded groups we'll talk about. We'll talk about the recent taxonomic changes as we look at each particular species and each particular genera going along through the year. But for the next few weeks, it's going to be cacti, 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 and then some more cacti. That's what we'll be doing. Thank you very, very much for watching. It's great to see the input coming in. We love the comments. Please check out the Kirkstone Botanica 2007 Instagram page. We've got lots of great pictures of plants that perhaps we don't get to cover in the greenhouse on there. Please, please, please join up to the uh, Kirkstone Botanica Facebook page and the friends of Kirkstone Botanica, which actually called people who like Kirkstone Botanica, on Facebook. You can put pictures of your own plants, you can join in the discussions, you can say, I wouldn't do it that way, I'll do it this way, or look at my fantastic plant and your plant's rubbish and my plant's fantastic, or the other way around. Whatever you want to do, be as controversial as you like. We welcome all criticism and commentary. And please, 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 please do subscribe. The more subscriptions we get in, the more output we can put out. It really is as simple as that. As simple as that. The more people have subscribed, the more work we can do. So tell your friends, invite people to like the page, and do comment, do contribute, do put pictures on Kirkstone Botanica Facebook page, and please give us as much feedback as you can. We love seeing your comments, we love seeing your plants. That's what Kirkstone Botanica is all about. Thank you very, very much, and for the last time, Happy New Year. So it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from the official Kirkstone Botanica mug. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. I thought we would start the first of our um, monthly updates on what's happening with the smaller uh, globular cacti. Although it might seem strange because I, I did start my plant collecting hobby with cacti, uh, I haven't really done a great deal about adding to the collection for quite a long time. And I just thought a few months ago that I'd start uh, getting a few um, Gymnocolysiums mainly because that was the, the genus that I was uh, most interested in. And there's a, a small specimen of uh, Gymnocolysium armatum, for example. And that sort of interest grew, as these things do, into a, a much wider interest in uh, other South American cacti, some of which I've had for many, many years. But I've been looking at the, the genera and trying to be quite systematic about that. So whilst I've concentrated very much on Gymnocolysium and uh, also another favourite, favourite genus of mine, Copiapoa, there is always the lure of other South American uh, plants like uh, Sulco Rebutia. And there's a, a lovely little specimen of um, Sulco Rebutia purpurea there. 
lovely uh, mat forming uh, group of plants, the silk or rebuchers. They form into small heads, uh, usually up to 50 to 100 eventually, which makes small mounds in the South American desert and incredibly floriferous. And the flowers are often almost as big as the plant bodies themselves. But mostly it's been um, Gymnocolisseum, that's that lovely dark bodied Birkti there. And uh, behind that we have a Gymnocolisseum quellianum. And I have talked very briefly before about the psychology of collecting, how people tend to collect things in sets, that they, they like certain things, and because they like certain things, they tend to like things which are similar to them. So for me, it was an extension from Gymnocolisseum uh, through to Copiapoa, Sulcorebutia, uh, Neoporteria. And then, because I've had, for example, um, some North American cacti for a long, long time, like this uh, Leuchtenbergia principis here, I started becoming more interested in the other um, North American uh, plants which belong to the Echino cactani group. So that's uh, Echinocactus, Ferrocactus, um, Homolocephala, Astrophytum, and particularly most recently Ferrocactus. Now Ferrocactus, depending on your definition, has probably about 50 to 100 individual species, many of which have subspecies. But of course the most obvious and attractive thing about Ferrocacti is when you actually consider the plant in, in top view, in dorsal view, when you can see that lovely radial symmetry and invariably very, very, very heavily and well-developed spines. Um, and these are often very, very brightly coloured. I mean, for example, if we look at this Ferrocactus humulus hybrid here, you can see the spines are actually a rich, dark, ruby red. And if we look at this, uh, this other uh, Ferrocactus grassless hybrid here as well, we can see that we've got a slightly different shade. Now the one plant I haven't got, which I would have loved to have shown you, is sort of looks a little bit like this plant from the top, but if you can imagine it with three times as many spines, and the spines are much, much stronger and thicker, to the point where they almost completely cover the plant, and uh, the, the spines are actually bright red, and that's a form of a Ferrocactus uh, grassless called Coloratus. And I'm actively trying to get that plant to show you. It's such an amazing plant. And another genus which has in interested me for a long, long time is Astrophytum, the so-called um, star cacti. Often assumed to be that uh, name because, for example, they often have a five-part radial symmetry like this Myriostigma nudum. And it's not, it's because uh, astrophytums are often covered with these star-like scales that look like stars when you look up into the sky. And you can see the Milky Way, for example, absolutely uh, blanketing the black sky with white pinpricks of light. And that's where the name astrophytum comes from. So anyway, we've got a few of those astrophytums and a few uh, myriostigmas. And this, of course, uh, refers back to my earlier point about psychology. There's only one species with this uh, uh, five-part symmetry and a subspecies, Coahuiens. But the species Myriostigma is such a, an emblematic plant, as such a, a signature iconic plant in any collection, that you often find yourself wanting more. And of course, instead of having more of the same thing, there are those wonderful Japanese hybrids. Um, this is uh, Myriostigma cultivar fukuryu and as you can see it has these uh, semi-monstrous growths leering out of the side of the plant which gives it quite a different look and feel to the the naked forma of astrophytum myriostigma that's nudum or uh, astrophytum myriostigma strongilogonum which is the the very thick ribbed plant and we have other Astrophyta myriostigma as well in the collection, which just shows how, how obsession works, really, doesn't it? Okay, this is uh, uh, a most curiously named plant with a Norwegian name, Fjordhest. Now, I don't know, I haven't really looked into the history of this uh, Astrophyta myriostigma 
cultivar fjord test. It looks very much like a, a normal nudum, but, but quite a different shape and a different shade of green. So we have a, a growing collection of, of astrophytums here. We have this uh, another double hybrid here, Astrophytum um, onzuka, which is uh, often known as onzuka u-type, which is basically a multi-ribbed um, astrophytum with very clearly marked uh, speckles on a very, very dark background. It gives quite an amazing uh, contrast, looking very much like a piece of limestone growing out of the the Mexican desert. But this has been hybridized with Ornatum, which is more a more usually an eight-ribbed form, and the only astrophytum which is very heavily and sharply spined. Now if I can just pan up through the the astrophytums and past one of the, the larger gymnocolisiums through the Leuchtenbergia, you can see the astrophytum Ornatum there. So you see it's a very heavily spined plant, almost like a a straight spined um, ferrocactus, if anything. But I did start off talking about Gymno uh, Coliseum, that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful South American species. And uh, there are probably realistically about a hundred uh, species of, of Gymno Coliseum. And if you want to be really, really harsh, you could say somewhere between 50 and 80. But in actual fact, if I can just uh, linger on this Gymnocolisseum amahouseri for a while, there are so many um, subspecies and varieties of these various species that you could easily devote all of your time and all of your resources, including space, to collecting just the genus uh, Gymnocolisseum. And they really are a, a lovely, lovely group of plants. Um, I'm actually winding up my, my buying, my plant buying for the year and I've got a very large delivery of Gymnocolisium coming but those will be more or less the last cacti that I buy for the year and there's a, an amazing similarity but also within the genus enough of a range of difference for people to find them um, worthwhile collecting. So we've got the very angular and sharply pointed ribs of this uh, confusingly named plant. I mean, some people know this plant as Gymnocolisium friedrichii. Some people know it as Mihanovicii. Uh, and even Strongylongonum. There's a lot of names that could be applied here. But Gymnocolisium as a genus is, is, a, is a glorious genus, ranging from plants which are almost um, spineless, like Horstii, to incredibly heavily spined plants like this Gymnocolisium polycephalum. I mean, just look at that spination there. It's more like, more like a, a savage ferrocactus or a cactus than anything else. And there are scales and graduations all the way through. And one of the even more um, apparent plus points on Gymnocolisium from a collector's point of view is that depending on the range of species that you have in your collection, you would find that you have plants in flower from really in February right through towards, what is it now, October. And you can see this, uh, this plant here is flowering very, very nicely. And then we also have some more buds um, on the way. I don't know if you can see there's another pink bud coming there. So the Gymnocolisium is a real um, collector's group of plants. You, you could devote your life to learning and, and studying these, these plants which centre on a sort of triangle between Argentina, um, Paraguay uh, and Uruguay. They really are a, a very, very diverse and collectible group of plants. So overall, what we're looking at here is a, is a balance between the South American cacti concentrating on the aforementioned Gymnocolisium but also others like um, Sulcoribusha and uh, the glorious uh, Copia Poa. I'm looking around to see if I can see a, a Copia Poa to show you right now. I'll have to move um, slowly. So we've got those Sulcoribusias that we, we saw earlier. Uh, going over the Gymnocolisiums, which we also saw. Now there's another group of plants which I've also always found very, very interesting. Ureosice. And this is Ureosice esmeraldana. Look how dark that is. It, it, it's nearly black 
And I love that. You know, I love to see those variations away from standard green. And uh, the Copiapoa hypogea lizard skin with that squamous or, or rugous body form. Really a most exotic looking plant sometimes. And not, not difficult to grow in any way whatsoever. Uh, so we're talking about Copiapoa. Now there are more Copiapoa in the greenhouse which are eluding my eyesight right now. But here's another a very unusual coloured plant. And this is Copiapoa grisio violacea. Again, very, very dark. And the, the spaces between the tubercles, if you can see them, are very light green. But the tubercles themselves are very dark, combined with the white areoles and those jet black spines. That really makes a, a vivid contrast. And speaking of Gymnocolisium, I, I really must get all these Gymnocolisiums together for the next uh, monthly update. We have another little Gymnocolisium here, quite a, a flat one, called Ragonese, which is also, as you can see, just about to produce um, some flowers for us to photograph. So there are two very large buds from this very small plant, and that pretty much sums up the delights of Gymnocolisium. You get these fantastic body shapes and different ranges of colours, although they're all to a pattern, which makes them collectible, but incredibly floriferous and, and reliable in terms of flowering. So that's more or less where we are with the, uh, the South American and North American cacti. I am in the process of, of reorganising, but I kind of uh, lump things together right now because I have to move plants in groups together around the greenhouse while I, I work on the greenhouse repairs. There are a couple of plants left uh, to show you that I wanted to talk about. One of them was this um, Ariocarpus retusus, which we probably missed the best days of. And this produced three very, very large flowers. And of course, Ariocarpus is often regarded as the, um, the aristocracy of the cactus world. Very, very slow growing, very unusual and uncactus like in terms of overall body morphology they, they really if you showed them to a non-cactus person it's doubtful that they would say that this is a cactus yet they are uh, and again a, a very collectible group with about 10 8 to 10 depending on definition species but many many hybrids and the Japanese have created some incredible um, cultivars I mean if you've got some time just google Ariocarpus Godzilla and you've never seen such a monster, the aptly named uh, Godzilla. Okay, so there we are. That's the, the smaller growing um, South American and North American cacti, the globular ones. I'll uh, try and specialize and concentrate on a different group. And this, this time we looked at Astrophytum and Copiapoa. Next time we might look at uh, Stenocactus or Echinofossilocactus as they're known now. And then the month after that we might look at furrocactus. But I've, I've got most of the smaller ones together now. Uh, but I've got about the same number again distributed in different parts of the greenhouse. And as I alluded to earlier, we do have a, a large uh, delivery of Gymnocolisium species coming from specialist Gymnocolisium grower coming in very soon. And of course I'll feature that and... Uh, as I add them into the collection, I'll talk about each species. Please don't forget to um, like and subscribe. It, it is important to us that we can keep making these videos. Uh, as I said in the last video I posted, it's very, very important to us that you send us pictures of your own plants, whether onto the, the Facebook page, Kirkstone Botanica on Facebook, uh, or Instagram. Uh, link with us, talk to us, share with us. We are very soon hoping to start a plant swap scheme whereby you would post a plant that you have surplus in your collection, an offshoot, an offshoot or a, uh, a branch that you don't particularly want anymore. And you might add to that details of plants that you particularly want. Um, so for example, I'm particularly looking for, I'll say it again, that Ferrocactus gracilis coloratus uh, as an example. So. Have a look around, have a look at all the other videos, check out Kirkstone Botanica on Facebook, 
check out Kirkstone Botanica 2007 on Instagram and uh, keep up the communication. For me, it's back to work. I've got lots of repotting to do. And it's a good day from me and a good day from Kirkstone. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.